Hello and welcome. There have been aircraft designers such as Bert Rutan and Vincent Bernelli who have astonished us with their radical designs. It was Bernelli who thought up the design of the remarkable CPY-3. The CPY-3 was to be a competitor for the Douglas DC-3 which had debuted in 1935. The CPY-3 was a large twin-engine all-metal monoplane with an unusual placement of its engines. It had a twin tail mounted on booms and a fuselage in the aerofoil shape of a wing when seen from the side. The CPY-3 could carry a tonne more payload than the DC-3 and take off in a mere 200 metres. Why then was the CPY-3 ignored? Since the early days of aviation, aircraft designers have dreamed of utilising the payload carrying space of the fuselage to create the lift needed to keep a plane in the air. The concept of a flying wing is not new. In 1909, Professor Hugo Junkers envisioned a large flying wing aircraft. Remember Jack Northrop's famed XB-35 and XB-49 flying wing designs of the 1940s and 1950s? The stealth aircraft of the 1980s, the Lockheed F-117A fighter and the Northrop B-2 bomber were flying wings. Benelli was a product of the pioneer days of American aviation. He was born in Temple, Texas and later the family moved east. He and his friend John Carissi first began experimenting with gliders in 1912. By 1915, the pair had produced their first powered design, an open biplane they built in New York. They tested it at the Hempstead Plains Airfield, now Long Island's Roosevelt Field. Benelli used it at air shows, making $500 to $1,000 a time. World War I created a great demand for aviation know-how and Bernelli used the opportunity to establish himself in the aircraft industry. During the course of the war, he worked for the International, Continental and Lawson aircraft companies in varied positions such as engineer, designer and superintendent. As an engineer, Bernelli believed that all the aircraft's basic components should be designed to help it maintain flight. That was not the case in all aircraft at that time. The fuselage in a conventionally designed plane, he felt, was only a box to carry passengers and cargo and provided no lift. Benelli was determined to create a plane where all the parts helped provide the lift needed to keep the plane in the air. For the vital task of providing the lift, designers generally relied entirely upon the wings. Benelli, however, felt a lighter and much more efficient aircraft was possible if the fuselage as well as the wings provided lift. He soon set about designing just such a transport. In 1920, Benelli teamed up with T.T. Remington to create his first lifting fuselage design. The plane, the RB-1, was a twin-engine biplane that incorporated many of the unique features that would be associated with Benelli-designed transports for the next five decades. The most recognisable feature of the Benelli-type transport was, of course, the wide, flat, airfoil-shaped fuselage, a feature that provided an estimated 40% of the aircraft's lift. Its unique engine placement was equally characteristic of a Benelli design. Rather than placing the engines between the wings, as was the custom, Benelli mounted the twin power plants side by side on the front edge of the aerofoil shaped fuselage. Benelli's idea had many advantages over more conventional aircraft engine placement. This made his planes lighter than comparable transports of more conventional design. Benelli's method also reduced stress in the wings at the points where the engines were mounted and reduced the plane's frontal area. Those changes decreased drag and improved the aerodynamics of a Benelli design plane. The design also had safety advantages. Some have claimed that the flat rectangular fuselage of his design transport was stronger and provided more protection for passengers than the long narrow fuselage of a conventional liner. 
In addition, his designs placed the engines well in front of the passenger compartment, which, experts agreed, helped absorb shock in the event of a crash. It also kept the propellers well away from the passenger area, which reduced both the noise and danger for the passengers in the case of propeller blade failure. The arrangement even allowed the flight crew partial access to the plane's engines from inside the cabin during flight. Benelli and others often referred to the lifting fuselage aircraft as flying wings. The term, strictly speaking, was not entirely accurate. The fuselage of a Benelli design aircraft, although aerofoil shaped, was distinctly not the same component as the wing. Benelli was convinced that he had created a truly revolutionary aircraft design and tried to gain acceptance from a sceptical aircraft industry. Until his death in New York in 1964, at the age of 69, Benelli remained tireless in his determination to remote his airfoil-shaped fuselage transport plane. Supporters claim that only a short-sighted aviation industry with a vested interest in preserving conventional design kept Benelli's ideas from, from revolutionising aircraft design. Others claim the advantages of the Benelli design were overstated. The argument remains unresolved and is not confined entirely to the past. The disagreement is sparked anew when designs of modern aircraft and even spacecraft incorporate Benelli's design concepts. Some have suggested that today's airliners would be safer if they incorporated Benelli's lifting fuselage design, the lifting body characteristic that keeps the US space shuttle flying after re-entry is arguably a direct application of Benelli's lifting fuselage design. Benelli's contribution to American aviation was more than just determination, it was genius as well. Both qualities made Vincent Benelli a true aviation pioneer. Thank you for watching and stay safe.